And welcome back. It's time for this week's Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, at the end of last week's segment, we touched on the Obama administration's nuclear deal with Iran. Uh, you indicated that a lot of good Democrats are against it, as well as virtually every Republican. But uh, now Secretary of State John Kerry has said that really the only alternative to this deal is war. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's... Uh pretty harsh, number one, and I, I think that Secretary of State Kerry engaged in, you know, four and a half hours of posturing the other day in front of the appropriate committee of the Congress. You know, uh, getting down to it, there was an arms embargo that was supposed to remain part of this deal. That was the case in April, and that's for conventional weapons. That got negotiated away. There was, on the implementation day, when this goes into effect, we don't know if they'll get as little as $50 billion all at once or as much as $100 billion. There's some debate about that. Uh, the Secretary of State Kerry said that the level of inspections under this agreement are unprecedented, and yet the inspections will take place with 24 days warning uh, and with no U.S. involvement. Uh, the agreement leaves Iran as a nuclear threshold power, and I think that's why there are so many Democrats that are skeptical, and a few will vote against. The question is, will there be enough to prevent an override of a presidential veto? Ben Cardin of Maryland, for example, he was a, uh, critical of a side agreement that was made with the Inter International Atomic Energy uh, Agency for inspections at the sites that will be producing or could produce uh, the trigger mechanisms uh, for uh, nuclear weapons. Chris Coons of Delaware, uh, Joe Biden's uh, successor in the U.S. Senate, also a Democrat, he said, Iran has seriously earned our distrust, which is a pretty explicit sentence, you know. John Tester, one of the leaders of the Democrats in the Senate, said, I don't trust these guys. Okay, again, direct to the point. Ben Menendez, you would expect, he's long been a defender of Israel, very concerned about this. He said he can't support it if he believes that it will leave room for Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. Chuck Schumer, Dick Durbin, both expressing concerns, and they're the guys that are expected to compete for the leadership next go-round. Uh, among the Republicans, the chairman of the committee uh, is concerned. After being very statesmanlike in the walk-up to it, he said, this looks to me like it leaves a pathway for Iran to get a nuclear weapon. Uh, Speaker Boehner in the House is explicitly against it. However, he's uh, going to have to rely on the Senate to approve it or turn it down. You know, they gave away economic sanctions. They gave away the leverage on the allies, our allies. They ignored the Senate, and they left Israel vulnerable. It's hard for me to say much good about uh, this agreement. Not much time left, but uh, right now the Democratic Party is preparing to consider a measure that would uh, open up the door to primary elections, uh, independent voters voting in their primary elections. You know, it'll be a big deal if they do that. And it might be a good idea for the Democratic Party. The, the only issue they're going to have, some of the union leadership is against it. And finally, the Democrats need to leave room for the Dan Borens and the Cody Graves of this world. And that's probably why they need this, but I just don't know. I would say it'll pass. We'll see. Well, you can read more about these and other topics at CapitalBeatOK.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.